Hey there, this is a special episode brought to you by Whale, a top 50 Mercy main who managed to solo queue climb from gold to become one of the best ranked Mercy players in North America in only two seasons. We are sharing his secrets in this video, so if you are a Mercy main yourself or just want to see a success story, then keep watching. Hello guys, welcome to the dojo. First of all, a big shout out for the creator of this episode, Whale. You can find his contacts in the description below, make sure to visit his stream by clicking on the card showing right now. He is streaming his matches interactively, so make sure to bump him with questions when he is online. Alrighty, as you heard it in the intro, we are going to share what there is to know for anyone wanting to climb with Mercy. Whale Speak rank is top 50 on NA, and he climbed a lot from where he started to become the number one Mercy on Overbuff. This guide is about how to climb as a Mercy main, written with love and from a lot of experience. So let's get to the guide. We are going to start with understanding the core philosophy of Mercy. Alright, so as a Mercy main, your goal above else is to stay alive. This is multitudes more important when you have rest as well. Dying an unintentional death while holding an important res is one of the worst things a mercy can do. What this means is that you need to play with the mindset that your life is the most important thing on your team. A good enemy team will be thinking the same way as well. As the saying goes, you kill the mercy first or you kill her the 11th. In practice this means that you need to make judgement calls every time you put yourself inside of the enemy. Is there a Genji way too overextended and about to die in the enemy territory? If there is even a moderate chance that attempting to save him will result in your own death, you need to leave him to die. It seems unnatural at first, but you will learn that in most situations if it is possible for him to escape, he will, and if it isn't, you will just end up not only failing to save him but dying yourself as well, changing a 5v6 with res to 4v6 without res for your team, essentially throwing the point. So let's talk about how to support your team. You are not a DPS character. It is not your job to get kills, and it is not your job to chase enemies. It is your job though to keep your team alive and winning fights, and you do that by healing and damage boosting them. A huge thing many players do not capitalize on is the damage boosting part of that sentence. If your allies are at full health, damage boost them immediately. Even if it is only for a half second, every moment of damage boosting can help. Likewise, if you have a purpled ally, there is nothing your healing beam can do for them. Switch to damage boosting if no one else is damaged and switch back to healing only when the purple is worn off or you know that the timing is less than a second from wearing off. If you don't know without a doubt that you should use your pistol, do not use it. As an extreme example of how much Mercy's pistol usage is not needed, here is a Mercy, a good friend of Whale, who managed to reach top 500 without firing their pistol so much as a single time in their entire career. We are going to talk more about this in the section about when to go battle Mercy. Staying out the line of sight is a very important principle with Mercy. A way Whale likes to tell students how to think about their positioning is to imagine an enemy soldier 76 always using his ultimate. Anytime you cross an open space alone, it should be a very calculated risk and done with Guardian Angel. A good Mercy never wants to stand in the middle of the fight, but silently out of line of sight to support her team from safety. So that's about the core philosophy of Mercy. Before diving deeper into how to Mercy however, we need to make sure that your settings are configured the way they should be. Of course, these are mostly personal preferences, but it may help you to see how top player uses these settings. First of all, set a light health bars on. Honestly, there should not be anyone having this off, as it is just so beneficial to be able to see the health of your allies. The next is toggle beam connection. Set this on, as this is a quality of life change more than anything else. It will make sure you keep the beam on as long as possible and will save your fingers from getting sore holding down left or right click all the time. However, toggling this off can be a benefit when toggling Guardian Angel prefers beam target on. Continuing with the settings, Guardian Angel prefers beam target is really a personal preference. Well, personally keeps this toggled off as it works best for his style of play. However, it is not incorrect to keep it on. What this does is lets you fly towards your current beam target instead of who you are looking at. Many argue that this gives you increased mobility since the beam target does not have to be in the line of sight and you can be saved from falling off a cliff jumping in and out in the hall of oasis or going around corners to escape and so forth. So why don't Whale and many others use it? 
because you sacrifice other mobility, additional healing or damage boosting, or quality of life in order to do it. When you prefer the beam target, you give up the ability to easily hop between teammates. To fly to a new teammate means that you have to either currently have your beam target on them or no one. Let's imagine an example scenario. You get caught in Zarya's grave along with your beam target, but there is a friendly Farah inside. The only way you can fly to her is if you break your beam connection with a punch, if toggling beam connection is on, wasting a very precious second that could lead you to dying. What if you keep the toggle beam connection off though? Wouldn't it be better? Well, then you run into another problem. Sure, you can stop healing quickly and then jump to the Farah, but now your beam is on the Farah who doesn't really need it. Your grabbed teammates do. If you had prefer beam target off, you would have the additional use of healing someone as you run away from them to safety. This can absolutely save teammate lives while keeping yourself safe. As one could imagine, this situation happens way more often than just Zarya Oats. In general, prefer beam target off is best for the average solo player, but duo cures, particularly those who like to pocket their Farah friend, should look into toggling this option on. The next is toggle guardian angel off. This is something that is not a matter of preference. You should always have this toggled off to give yourself additional mobility. Not only it is easier to move exact partial distances towards a teammate, so you fly into healing range but not directly into the center of the fight, but the biggest reason to have this option toggled off is because it will give you the option to hold down the guardian angel key in order to use it the second you see a teammate. By doing this, you can escape otherwise certain death situations, because you only need to see an ally for a single frame and you don't have to worry about precise reaction timing. If you are falling to your death, an ally often will accidentally wander into a place to save you for a frame or two. Likewise, if you are running away with someone chasing you, you can escape that half second faster to your ally around the corner by guardian angel triggering right at the frame you come into their sight. It will help you catch up with your allies who are rounding corners quickly in front of you. The next one, sensitivities are personal preferences. Try adjusting them how you best find yourself effective with them. Veil vale personally keeps both Guardian Angel and Beam sensitivity to 100% and has no complaints. That's about the basics and settings. We want to mention here that if you are looking for a dedicated private coaching to significantly accelerate your improvement, support the Overwatch Dojo channel on Patreon and claim your coaching rewards. Click on the card right now or the link in the description. Ok, let's talk about when it is correct time to bring out a pistol and go on a Battle Mercy Rampage. Very rarely. In general, your average player will only ever want to go and bring out the pistol if there is no other option. For example, if you are caught alone with a flanker and it's a fight or die situation. Many times you will still die, but with some good positioning, breaking the line of sight to heal or getting health packs, luck and aim, you can win more fights than you would think. That being said, Whale always tries to avoid the flanker by jumping to the safety of a teammate and calling out it to the team. But rarely is not never. Here are some good examples of when you might just want to use your pistol. Finishing off an enemy while everyone is safe. If there is an annoying Lucio jumping around the objective stalling in overtime and your team can't seem to hit him, go ahead and help try to kill him to ensure victory before his team makes it back. If there is a purple enemy with low health trying to get away, help your team finish him off with a few shots. And of course, perhaps the number one reason to use your pistol to get the last bit of ultimate charge for a fight winning rest. Sometimes you will find your entire team dead around you, 95% of ultimate charge and no one to heal in order to get off that game saving res. The only correct option left here is to take out your pistol and shoot the easiest target to hit regardless of health until you get your ult. Alright, so you also need to understand when not to go battle mercy by any means. Essentially never bring out your pistol when your team needs healing. Even if you think you have yourself an easy kill, do not do it. Your job is a healer, not a DPS. Keep your teammates alive and let them worry about finishing off the enemy. You almost never want to shoot an enemy farther than your healing beam can reach. Further than that and you are definitely going to be doing less damage than simply damage boosting an ally. Here are some additional tips to help you. First, you don't have to reload your pistol and you shouldn't. 
After firing some shots, just switch back to your healing stuff and the pistol will automatically be reloaded after a few seconds. The only time you don't want to use this to your advantage is when fighting a flanker attacking you. The second one is almost never shoot someone outside of your healing beam range. Chances are you will do almost no damage and simply charge the enemy's healer ult. Let's talk about your bread and butter, the Resurrect. The amount of people raised by your ultimate is not important. There are amazing one-man reses and absolute garbage five-man reses. The question a good mercy player will ask themselves before using their ult is this. Will my res win us this teamfight? The way you determine that is taking a quick look at the situation. How many people are alive on each team? What ults do they have? How close are they to the respawn point? Let's take a look at some examples and why they are good or bad. The first example is the following. You are in a teamfight where your Reinhardt and Soldier 76 trade themselves for the enemy Rain and 76. If you res now, you turn a 4v4 into a 6v4 situation, have a shield to hide behind and your main DPS pushing the enemy. This is good because they won't stand a chance and you will then go on and win the teamfight. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's say this time you lose your Ana, Reinhardt and Soldier 76. Our Roadhog died out of range and will have to be running back to the fight and you didn't get any kills yet. You can get a triple res. Should you do it? No. This is a bad res because what will happen is you will be using your ult to push a 5v6 fight that is likely to be lost. Now you wasted your ult and your team has to wipe again before you can reset. Even worse, at lower leagues, that Roadhog will likely try to help his dying team too late due to his late respawn and end up dying and staggering your team an additional 20 seconds. Let's see another one. Now let's say it is Hanamura point one defense and your only other support is Symmetra who dies with her ultimate. The enemy flanker is on you and you are about to die. This is a great time to use the res. By resing you will be able to give your team a teleporter that can turn around the fight you can use the res invulnerability to escape the flanker and you can continue to keep your team alive until the teleporter edges out the team fight victory. Finally, the most important example. Your team is gathering in front of Temple of Anubis point 2 gate when a diva ult wipes out 4 members of your team. Do you res all 4 and push in or retreat and regroup? Absolutely retreat. If you were to use the res, it would be still a 6v6 situation and the only thing that you would be doing is saving your team a 15 second walk back. It's much more beneficial to save that res for reinforcing the next push on the point where you can gain the numbers advantage with a well-timed ultimate. Alright, let's talk about how to position yourself. Positioning is the most important skill a mercy player can have. Earlier we mentioned that Vale tells his students to pretend there is always an enemy soldier 76 ulting Always avoid the enemy line of sight. If they can see you for even a moment, you can oftentimes die quickly and throw the fight for your team. An extremely helpful tip for using Mercy's Beam is that it lasts for a short duration even after the line of sight is broken. This means you can consistently heal someone around the corner by only barely poking in their line of sight before heading back into the cover over and over again. This should absolutely be done whenever it is possible. As Mercy, you almost never want to be too close to your team. Being in the center or front of your team will especially result in a quick death in most situations. If you are in front of your team, you will be melted down quickly by the enemy DPS. If you are in the center of your team, you leave yourself extremely vulnerable to being killed in an AOE ultimate such as a Grav or an Earth Shatter. So the ideal place to heal and damage boost your team is from about 5 meters within max beam distance. This allows you to comfortably keep your beam on your target, but from a safe distance that you won't get killed whenever your team is wiped by the enemy ultimates. This distance also serves to save you in case of a flanker attacking. If you find yourself being attacked by the flanker, you have a comfortable distance to fly to your allies and survive. The next tip is to never stand still. Even if you are safe behind cover, out of line of sight, that can change in a single moment. With only 200 health, you will die nearly instantly to a couple well-placed headshots. Always be shifting around, even if just a few stutter steps back and forth. The only exception is when your team is getting wiped and you want to make sure to hide well and rest them when it is time. By standing still you don't give any noise and you can go in for a quick rest from your hiding spot. You can also abuse Guardian Angel. 
Oftentimes you can't be behind the ideal cover you want because several teammates need you at once or there are flankers actively trying to kill you. In which case, never run if you can help it. Guardian Angel everywhere. Dashing between targets not only creates space which gives you time to self-heal and allies time to kill your pursuer, but it will make you a very difficult target to hit, especially if you learn how to stop short and change Guardian Angel targets quickly. The last one is always know where your Farah is. Your Farah is your get out of jail free ticket. Being able to instantly fly away vertically can save you from most attackers. This also works with snipers who tend to position on high grounds or characters like Genji or Winston who jump around a lot. If you know where they are, you are going to be able to save yourself using their elevated positions to fly to. The next part is about how to hide. As a Mercy, you should not be needing to hide very often. It is a myth that the second Mercy gets res, she should hide. Oftentimes, it is much better to stay healing your team and rezzing the one or two people who may die in a fight than hiding and going for a fireman res. This is much more reliable because when hiding too much, you will oftentimes find your team die staggered, either too far apart in location or timing. As a result, you can lose a fight you otherwise would have won if you just stayed healing in it. Sometimes no res is needed at all, you can just win team fights with staying and healing or boosting your teammates. Ok, but what do we mean by hiding? You should stop all healing and damage boosting. Yes, even if it means that an ally might die. Remove all line of sight your enemy has on you. Create space greater than your beam distance but less than your guardian angel limit between you and your allies. Preferably have a corner you can move around if you are spotted. Keep the allied line of sight in mind as well. It is very important to be able to guardian angel to your team quickly after you are done hiding. So when should you hide? In game ending fights and ultimate fights. If your team is sitting on the king of the hill point with 99% and the other team has to use everything they can do to win the fight, they won't be holding back any ultimate abilities, cooldowns or players. This means when the point is 95% or you are defending a 2 CP with 30 seconds left on the clock, you should be getting into a hiding position, waiting for the enemy team to use all their ultimates to clear your team, then fly in and res and turn the fight completely in your favor. Ultimate fights in general are good to hide for as well, but predicting when the enemy team has multiple ultimate abilities they plan to use can be difficult before high masters, so it shouldn't be done until you are comfortable enough with your game sense to justify the hide. Other scenarios are every time you hear a hunting alt activate. You should immediately drop everything and hide. And what is a hunting alt? An ultimate where the number one objective is oftentimes to kill you, the mercy. Such ultimates are Soldier 76 Visor, Junkrat Steyr, Genji's Blade. Other ultimates can be worth hiding from, but these are the absolute most important to avoid. Remember, they are looking to kill you specifically. Quick note on pocketing. Pocketing should never mean solely being dedicated to a single person and absolutely no one else. Doing this will put your team at a needless disadvantage. Instead, what pocketing should mean is having your default priority target for healing and damage boosting being a single hero, and that is usually Farah. When you have no one to heal, damage boost your pocket. When two people need healing equally, heal your pocket first. Otherwise, your job as a support for your team is unchanged. Just because you have a Farah, that doesn't mean that you should let your tanks die because Lucio can only tickle them with his healing music so fast. Alright, that concludes our mercy guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it and again a very big thanks for Whale well for creating the content for this episode. If you are looking for teammates to duo Mercy with or just want to be part of an Overwatch community striving for improvement, join the Overwatch Dojo Discord now. And as usual, like and share and leave your comment below. See you guys next time.